Hi everyone, this is Dan Creighton from photogeneralist.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to use layers and layer masks. I'm going to show you, I have three photos open on screen. All were shot on a tripod so that nothing moved and the images remain in registration throughout this example. Here are the three images. The first image is a natural light exposure with window light coming from the right. I like the composition and I like the shadow on the left on the wall. However, the flower and the leaves itself as well as the vase lack punch and dimension. So, using a small flashlight, I light painted the rose, which brings out the texture and color, as well as the leaves. And in a separate image, I just light painted the vase, which gives a highlight for dimensionality. Now, I want to combine these elements into one final good image. And in order to do so, I need to use layers and layer masks. When I start working with layers and layer masks, I want to look at the three photos and determine which photo will have to have the least work done to it and make that my top layer. In this case, it will be this composition here and this exposure. So I'm going to start by on the right hand side on image number 376. This will be my bottom layer. And you can see your layers palette on the right hand side. If you can't see your layers palette, go to Windows and choose Layers or hit F7 which will also open your layers palette. You can see there is only one layer open currently. What you want to do is go to your middle image and duplicate this image as a layer onto your third image. In this case it would be image 376. So I'm going to choose layer and duplicate layer from the Photoshop menus palette. When the dialog opens up you can choose to call this whatever you would like. I will call it layer 2 and I will choose the destination document as image 376. Now you will see when I click on image 376 that I have duplicated that second image into the layers palette. And when doing so that layer hides the layer beneath unless I turn the layer visibility on or off. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the first image. I'm going to duplicate it into a new layer onto layer in the image 376 as well. And now when I go there, you will see I have three layers open with each of the three photos combined. Now the top layer hides both layers beneath it. In order to reveal what's underneath it, you need to use a layer mask. In order to create a layer mask, you use this icon here, which when you hover over it, it will say add layer mask. Click on it, and it creates a layer mask. I will do that on both of the top two layers. Now because the layers hide what's beneath, you need to work from the bottom up. In this case, I will work with the second layer. I will hide the first layer. Make sure the second layer is activated by clicking on it. You will see it's, co it's colored in blue here. And that will allow me to paint what's underneath. Now, if I turn the visibility of the second layer off, I can determine what I want to allow to show through. In this case, I just want to allow the building to show, not the building, the bottle to show through. I will activate it, click inside the layer mask, which is colored in white. White hides, black reveals. Since black reveals, I want to use a paintbrush with a soft brush in this case and use a foreground color of black and then I will just paint out the bottle. I will use 100% opacity. I am not going to be fancy here. I just want to quickly paint it out because what is above it will hide it. The layers above will hide this in one second. Okay, so I have now revealed the bottle from the bottom layer. I'm going to activate the top layer 
and make it visible. And I'm going to use its layer mask to bring out the important details from the second layer, which are the color and texture in the rose petals and leaves, as well as the bottle, and maybe some of this warmth from the right-hand side. So making the top layer active, making it visible, and making sure I'm working in the layer mask by clicking inside it, you will see a frame show up saying the layer mask is active. I will again paint in black. This time I will get a little bit more detailed with smaller brushes to paint in what's underneath. And I'm just going to give you a quick and dirty example. Again, I'm painting with white. I'm sorry, I'm painting with black to reveal what's visible underneath. Now, if I have gone too far, and you can see I have by the halo on the left and the shadow on the right, if you hit the X key, it will turn your foreground color to white, and then you can paint with white to hide the mistakes you've made with the black paintbrush. Switching back to black, choosing a larger brush, and I do this by the right or left bracket keys. Left bracket makes the brush smaller, right makes it bigger, and then choosing a lower opacity by using the number keys. The number one is 10%, the number nine is 90%, and zero would be 100%, with each key falling in between, 20, 20%, 20%, 30, 30%, etc. I'm going to choose a 30% opacity on the brush, and I am going to paint in some of that warm color. And each time I click the mouse and drag the paintbrush, it adds 30% color. And if I went too far, again, I can paint with white and fade it out. So there is quickly an idea of how you can use layers and layer masks to create a final image from multiple exposures of the same scene. I hope you find this useful and I hope it answers your questions and gives you a chance to experiment on your own. Please get more detailed when you do your layer mask than I have here. This was just a quick and dirty example. Good luck and I look forward to seeing the photos you create. Have a good day.